the backlash. looking at protests in Washington, D.C. today. Advocates holding this sit-in, children wrapped in silver blankets in solidarity with what children are undergoing with this Trump administration zero-tolerance policy. In New York, crowds gathering at LaGuardia Airport, supporting children that were believed, and we were just discussing the secrecy issues, but believed to be separated from their parents, some holding signs, we are with you, and the singing of We Shall Overcome. Take a look out in Portland, Oregon, where protesters set up tents, Form, forcing ICE enforcement field offices to actually be temporarily shut down. This resistance getting larger. Nine days from now, there are major protests planned for June 30th, that's across the entire country, to rally for a continued effort against the zero tolerance part of this policy, which remains in force. Artists and activists getting involved, a powerhouse list of celebrities saying they want to join this cause and use their platforms. Many celebrities expected to come out in Los Angeles and New York as well. Now, a star lending his voice to the Mex, Wilmer Valderrama, is the former star of that hit comedy, The 70s, that 70s show. He's an actor and activist. His family immigrated here from Venezuela when he was 14, and he's been quite outspoken on issues of immigration reform and tweeted about what real leadership would involve, empowering those around to make an environment where anything is possible. In fact, two years ago in an emotional speech, he talked about the struggles his own parents went through following the rules and immigrating legally after selling everything they had to get the family to America. I remember one time when my mother walking, you know, a couple miles back to the house with the grocery bags, and I looked at my mom and I said, Mom, one day we're going to drive. And she said, um, okay, mijo. Wilma Valderrama joins us now. Uh, you are someone who occupies an interesting position uh, because of the work you do. Uh, a lot of people love you, all kinds of people. Uh, and yet we're in a country uh, where we're seeing a debate over who really is American and whether people right. who are trying to get here uh, should be mistreated as a, quote, deterrent, as a tool of U.S. Right. government policy. Walk us through how you view this. Well, I think I think there's a there's a misconception, and I think I, what you guys were talking about earlier, I think, was very relevant to this topic because there is a pivot. Uh, there is a pivot that happens on a daily basis when you're when you're telling a story and when you're broadcasting news, right? And 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 what happens is that they're they're blurring the lines of what the word immigration really means, right? They're they're making it sound like there's this problem, there's this issue, you know. I, I think also I think that there's another blurry line where they think that, you know, politics are not human issues. Human issues are not politics, right? So, mm. so the, the biggest issue is, is, is that we, we, are, we are looking at this group of uh, individuals coming to America as of a percentage, as of a group of people, as opposed to actual individuals, people that have a family. And I think that, that that's, that's, a, I think that's the biggest misconception. And I think why people are so torn and how they feel about this conversation that they're so far removed from. So it's hard for people to have an actual opinion when they're not necessarily, um, you know, affected directly um, or indirectly by it. You know, when really they were to really understand that there's, there's more uh, they can relate to this than, than they actually have, um, uh, have understood. I wonder how you, how you feel artists uh, can engage this, because a lot of politics is everyone has the right to come down where they do, and uh, any big hit show like yours, any big movie is going to have people of all views watching it. Uh, and yet we're also talking about whether we're going to continue to deal with ethical and moral lines as a nation. Uh, Fox News has gotten a lot of criticism for the way they've dehumanized some people in this. Now their right. talent is slamming some of their coverage. I'll read to you Judd Apatow saying they're promoting evil ideas. Uh, another uh, Fox talent says they's disgusted to work at a company that has anything to do with Fox News. Seth MacFarlane saying he's embarrassed by this. Uh, what do you think is the role of, of artists who have such a following uh, in this debate? I think it's important that we block the, 
you know, uh, the pivot of the conversation. And, and instead of making the politics, do not, do not forget that these are human issues. And a lot of people are very cynical about, about artists, you know, musicians, athletes, and, and everyone getting involved in this, in this national conversation. But we, you know, let's not forget that we are also human beings and that we are mm -hmm. people that have a story that, re, that not only resembles but parallels the people that are in this border and the 2,000 kids that came here with a hope, right? So, you know, you look at what you can do, you know, from, from the specific, your platform is to continue to hold accountable the story. What really is truly happening and not let the pivot create some kind of decisive, uh, uh, undecided uh, 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 thought where all of a sudden this issue slows down mm -hmm. and it becomes one more of the things of the laundry list that we have to address with an administration that unfortunately, you know, sees that, that this was a very hard thing to pivot. And this mm -hmm. was a very, very difficult thing to tell a, a, a world, a planet, right, and specifically the United States, that this is something you shouldn't feel, right? So, so what can we do together is that we, we have to hold them accountable, we have to put pressure, and we have to have them give us a timeline on when these families are going to be reunited, because right. this is the other thing. The other thing that's very unique is that this executive order doesn't mean that, you know, uh, that the, all that means is that new arrivals are just going to be now kept right. in the same cage. Well, right. stay, stay with me, stay with yeah. me, because you're talking about the policy piece, and we want to do something here to bridge the conversation. I want you to stay with me, and I want to bring in Congresswoman <laughs> Pramila Jayapal, who visited Attention Center in Washington State for moms separated from their children. She's working as well on these June 30th protests. Uh, and so, to the point I was just discussing with Wilmer, I want to read something else uh, that another artist has said, a comedian, but again, these are stories that go across politics and policy. Uh, Billy Eichner, who's been a big critic of, of Donald Trump, said something that I think cuts to the heart of it, Congresswoman. He wrote, this will always now be the administration that ripped children away from their parents, even children with mental disabilities. They didn't stop until shouted at from every corner of the globe, telling them they are inhumane, that is who they are, and they'll do it again. Congresswoman, your view of that point, and, and, and as Wilmer's with us, what it means for artists and others to be speaking out, not as a political matter, but as they argue, as a moral matter. Well, I think I completely agree with that. It is not a political matter. It is not a policy matter. It really is a question of right and wrong. And I said that on the floor today with the rule. I spoke on the rule around the Ryan bill because what this president has done and what I saw at the federal detention center is actually a federal prison in talking to these women is these are asylum seekers. They are people who are seeking a better life. They have made tragic tragic choices because they had to. One woman who left her blind child at home and brought her other child to safety because she had to at least save one of them. Another woman whose eldest son had been shot and killed by gangs, second son shot and paralyzed by gangs, and finally took the third child again to try to bring that child to safety. And to see these children being stripped away from their parents, these women told me that children as young as one year old, um, that they had ta been taken away, they hadn't talked to their kids and so I think humanizing this issue as your previous speaker said and having our cultural icons around the around the globe frankly not just the country say to us that America you are better than this right. you know as well, horrible let me play as this for has you been, because I want to get you and Wilmer on this let me play you and others who spoke out as as early as before this was the top news story in all fairness uh, the news response to what's out there take a look they wept every single time they talked about their children. The mothers were literally sitting in a room next to where the children were being held and could hear their children screaming. What country is that? This is the United States of America. My younger brother left back in Japan, never really recovered from the trauma of his separation from his mothers and his siblings. My mother always had deep sorrow about having to leave her baby behind. How important is it for uh, political leaders and others to bear witness so that the nation can respond? Uh, first to you, Congresswoman. 
It is really important for us to bear witness, but we are also the ones, I'm an immigrant myself, one of only 12 members of Congress, including Senator Hirono, who were born outside of the United States. And so to hear people, including the President of the United States, talk about immigrants by conflating everybody, gang members, in talking, using words like infest, is so humiliating to who we are as a country. And I think that is what people are responding to, that this isn't a political issue. My office has been flooded with calls from Republicans and Democrats across the country, not just in my district, saying thank you, stand up for this. I may not agree with you on other things, but I do agree with you on this. We should not treat children this way. And that is why you know, I uh, worked to organize this mass protest on the June mm -hmm. 30th with <clears throat> Move On and the National Domestic Workers Alliance. We're now up to over 300 groups, 380 events on June 30th around the country, over 300,000 people that have already signed up to come and a huge protest here in Washington, D.C., because it is outrageous that this president created this crisis. He implemented the zero tolerance policy. That is why we are seeing what we are seeing. He can lift up the phone and call Jeff Sessions and end it. It does not right. need an executive order. Right. And he didn't actually reverse the policy. No. And, you know, what right. he's doing and right now is saying, let's just indefinitely detain in prison camps families. That's what we're going to do. Who thinks incarceration of children is a solution to what we're dealing with? That's just right. wrong, and, and he needs to reverse it. Right, and that's why there's so much left, even with the new order. Uh, Wilmer, your views, uh, as you were watching there, the clips, including Senator Hirono talking about what her family went through. You know, I, I've told my story so many times. I, I put, we should never forget to put on, it, it, this is not, this is beyond a matter of, like, just wear somebody else's shoes. Um, you know, this is, this is, this is the moment we we have been called to be there for a fellow human, for a fellow brother and a sister who, who seeks exactly what everyone from multiple generations has come to this country to seek. The exact same thing. There's no difference between those families, that, you know, detained. Uh, by the way, who's looking out for our children? Who, who is making sure they're, they're warm at night? Who's bathing them? Who's watching them bathe? Like, we don't have any information about how they're being treated. So that's why there's an urgency to reunite this, you know, these kids with, with, with the families. I think it's, it's our responsibility to not, to not let down, not, not quiet down, and not to not look at this executive order as most are going to look like, well, he already signed it. What else do you guys want? No, there is, there is a timeline that we need to see when these 2,000 kids are going to be reunited with their kids. There's kids and there's, there's young men and women dying in these cages because they haven't gotten the proper, the proper care. You know, so, you know, like, like the rally that in, in Washington, Voto Latino uh, is, is organizing one in Tornillo, uh, Texas, um, why were the, uh, where the actual uh, uh, tent cities uh, are, are being built. And uh, we're bringing elected officials and, and um, you know, human rights advocates and and, uh, and, uh, and religious leaders to go out there and put the pressure and the amount of timeline and where we're going to reunite everyone again. Um, the truth of the matter is that this is the type of things that if we let them cool down, you know, then they have now a recipe to get away right. with this kind of thing that, that we're not going to be able to stop. So everyone right, has to really put in it, put, put some thoughts and put some hours into this. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.